morning. It is good that we are here together to worship God in this place at Fire Presbyterian Church. I am Joel Alvis. I'm the interim pastor here this morning, and will be assisted in worship leadership by Stacy Clark. So we gather, we gather to uh, to share in this time together. Um, so now you see the announcements that are in the bulletin. <clears throat> I would like to lift up for you. Uh, uh, the, when we get to the anthem, there will be a time when you as a congregation will be queued and you will participate uh, in the anthem. You ask to participate as you want to uh, sing it together. So, no one can ever say they've never been invited to be in a choir. Because today we're all going to be in a choir as part of the anthem. So pay attention. Um, you, will also, you may also have noticed that there's a letter from uh, our music director, Nell Adams. Uh, Nell has decided that this is the time for her to uh, to retire uh, and to step aside. So uh, we will make plans to recognize her. And I think uh, if you want to uh, express your appreciation to her today and coming and going, that would be fine. I would like to myself. So thank you very much, Nell. It has been a, a, a real a privilege to, for me to work with her in this time. Uh, also in the bulletin is an insert from the nominating committee. They are seeking names, uh, recommendations from you for people to serve in the, uh, as an elder uh, in the class of 2026. And don't be afraid to recommend yourself if you would like to. So that's, that's uh, there as well. As well as um, pledge cards, which um, you'll hear more about as the service unfolds. At the, uh, during the second hymn, the ushers will come forward into the, uh, and, and pass the, uh, pass baskets, and you may place your pledge cards in the basket if you so choose at that time. Um, so, uh, it is good that we're here, and as we begin worship today, um, Jan, Elder Jan Taylor will give a brief uh, moment of permission about stu the stewardship of this. Good morning. It's good to see everybody and um, we're glad to hear this morning. I came up a little earlier to see whether I needed to stand on this box or not since I'm already so tall. So we will hope I do not fall backwards on it when I get to step away. Um, Stewardship Sunday, as you know, is always a very special day, special day here at Frondra. And uh, we have come to physically present our pledges, but it also gives us a chance to recommit our lives and our resources. Uh, and, we're, and, and we are reminded of our commitments to Frondra and to each other. You all know about the various ministries of the church, the things that are so dear to our hearts, uh, that, re that rely on the resources that we share to keep them going, our connection with Stupot, our service at our adopted school, our missions to Haiti, our um, participation in Habitat, and all the various other things, plus all the things that we individually do in the community that are so important. And that we share, because we are a small group, we talk about the other things that we're doing out into the, in the community to each other and encourage each other. Um, the, the financial commitments that we have also should, um, are important, and that's what we're focusing on today, but we also need to remember the um, privilege we have of committing our personal gifts our gifts of compassion, of teaching, of patience, of encouragement, of responsibility to each other, of kindness, of hospitality, of sharing, of community building, and of fellowship. And all of these are things that are very important to us as a church and very important to our community. People, uh, especially during this time of transition for us as a church, other people who come in to talk to us have reminded us of the, of the unique position that Fondren holds in the community, and it is indeed very true. We are 
uh, it would be very difficult to replace in the community. And, and the mission that we have is a very important one and one that we all kind of take seriously. It takes all of us. And it takes all of our gifts and all of our kinds of gifts to make things work and to make Fondry what it is, what it should be, and what we really believe that God wants it to be. Um, we have a mission to each other, we have a mission to the community, and we have a mission to the wider hurting and needy world with renewed energy and resources. Together, let's get to work to continue our mission. And thank you for your participation in all the different areas of the church, financial and personal. And please know how significant the participation of each person is to the ministry of Fondry as we go forward. And uh, we express gratitude to God and to each other for the special bond that we have with each other. Let us worship God. our hearts. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God? Please stand for the opening.
And now let's confess our sins. Let us confess our sins, for the Holy One delights in blessing those who seek to walk with God. God, we have not done with this kindness.
join me in prayer. Gracious God, you are the word made flesh to dwell among us. We ask that as we come and listen to the word that is read, your light will illuminate our way and share your goodness and grace and wisdom in us with this moment. We pray in Jesus' name. The first reading this morning comes from the uh, Old Testament, from the book of Micah, uh, the prophecy there in chapter 6. Let us listen that we may hear what God may be sharing with us this day. Hear what the Lord is saying. Arise, lay out the lawsuits before the mountains. Let the hills hear your voice. Hear, mountains, the lawsuit of the Lord. Hear, eternal foundations of the earth. The Lord has a lawsuit against his people. With Israel, he will argue. My people, what did I ever do to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. I brought you up out of the land of Egypt. I redeemed you from the house of slavery. I sent Moses, Aaron, and Miriam before you. My people remember what Moab, King Moab's king Balak had planned. And how Balaam, Baor's son, answered him, Remember everything from Shechem to Gilgal, that you might learn to recognize the righteous acts of the Lord. What does the Lord require? With what should I approach the Lord and bow down before God on high? Should I come before him with entirely burnt offerings, with year old calves? Will the Lord be pleased? with thousands of rams, with many torrents of oil, should I give my oldest child for my crime, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my spirit. The Lord has told you, O mortals, what is good. And what does the Lord require from you? To do justice, embrace faithful love, and walk humbly with your God. The New Testament reading comes from the book of Matthew, and it is part of the Sermon on the Mount. In fact, it's the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus taught crowds in Matthews 5, 6, and 7. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountain, and he sat down, and his disciples came to him, and he taught them, saying, Happy are people who are hopeless because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are people who grieve because they, may, they will be made glad. Happy are people who are humble because they will inherit the earth. Happy are people who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness because they will be fed until they are full. Happy are people who show mercy because they will have mercy. Happy are people who have pure hearts because they will see God. Happy are people who make peace because they will be called God's children. Happy are people whose lives are harassed because they are righteous, because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are you when people insult you and speak all kinds of bad and false things about you, all because of me. Be full of joy and be glad because you will be great in your reward in heaven. In the same way, people harass the prophets who came before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to make you uncomfortable today. Word of warning. I'm going to talk about politics. No, I'm not. Still going to make you uncomfortable. I'm going to talk about sex. No, not that either. I'm going to talk about money. Surveys and headlines inform us that people in the United States are willing to talk about just about anything other than money. Politics, sex, family, tell all sorts of tales out of school, as we say. 
But I'm going to talk about money. Your money and mine. And more specifically, about our attitudes towards money and how we make decisions about how we use it individually and within organizations like the church. Early on in my ministry, I served on what's called the Committee on Ministry for my Presbytery in Eastern North Carolina. It's a group of ministers and church leaders who um, come from throughout the region. That particular presbytery had 190 churches. It was really huge. Um, and we were, help, we were responsible for assisting all those churches in locating pastors. Does that sound familiar? and for assisting churches when difficulties arose between the pastor and the church. Those things do happen. So I was young in my ministry. I was only, had been, had been uh, ordained maybe two years when they called me. I wondered why, but they did. And I was tasked one of the very first things out of the gate, I was tasked to go with one of the other members of the committee, and we were to visit a church with the session and the pastor. The session is the, the church council and the pastor. They were reports and rumblings and concerns. So we went and we listened, and I don't recall all the things that were said, that were issues that came up. But I do remember at one point getting a little bit frustrated with one of the church leaders that we were visiting with. There was some concern about finances, and I don't remember exactly what was said, but I remember what I said. And I said, well, don't we all give to those organizations where we find purpose and meaning so that we can make a difference? And then I paused, and I said, don't we? Crickets. And I wondered, what happened? Did I say something that was not true? Did I say something that was not helpful? I was looking at a room of, of people who, I, I was the youngest person there, and all of them pretty much could have been my parents, and maybe even my grandparents. What did I know? Talking about money, or sex, or politics, or a lot of other things is hard. Most of the time, it is hard because we focus on the thing which is not important. We don't pay attention to the important thing. All those things are important, but we need to focus on what, how we talk about them. We focus on our feelings and our reactions we think about shame and guilt and pride. We let those things invade our heart and we don't let them shape our thoughts and our values. What are your thoughts and your values about sex or politics or money? Those are the things that matter. One of the things that I learned from my parents, and I'll admit we had difficulty talking about money when I was growing up, but one of the things I learned from them is that it's not the amount involved that really matters. What matters, what mattered then and what matters now, is the value that the money expressed. When I learned, what I learned did not come directly from words of instructions. There were some, but there was a lot more example. What they did, I paid attention to it, and I learned from family stories when they talked about money and in decisions that were made. My learning of what they taught me about earthly resources has unfolded over my lifetime as I thought about how how they made decisions, and how I have made decisions, how Vicki and I have made decisions in our lives. Small conversations.
conversations and meaningful actions. Your experiences are your own, I have no doubt. But I'm pretty sure that all of us, in some way or another, had early family experiences that created a template about how we think and act and talk and use our financial resources. There's a famous aphorism that is attributed to John D. Rockefeller, who was the founder of Standard Oil, and at one point in, in, the, in the world, he was the richest man in the world. He was asked the question, how much money is enough? You may know the story, and his response, just a little bit more. Now, it's a story, and it may not be true, but it indicates an attitude that is so common in the world. How much is enough? Just a little bit more. We want more, but why? If the question to John D. Rockefeller had been, what more do you want to do with your money? How would he have said? As followers of Jesus, we need to pay attention to what he says about financial resources and spiritual resources as well. Eleven of Jesus' parables talk directly about money. The point, though, is not always simply to provide instruction on what to do with it. The point is to provide illustrations of how we make decisions about the resources we have in our lives. All of the resources, financial, temporal, emotional, spiritual, how do we use those resources in our lives? The Beatitudes don't specifically talk about financial resources or money, yet they offer us a pattern of possibilities about attitudes that we may have and actions we may take. May take. The translation this morning, the Common English Bible, uses the, the word happy. Happy are those who, and you may be familiar with other translations that use the word blessed are you. The benefit comes not from a benefit of acquisition. Happiness and blessings don't come because of things that happen and we purchase them. Your happiness or your blessing comes from how you engage with other people. How is it that you and I use those resources we have, our time, our energy, and yes, our money. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. These are touchstones of living that we draw from the verse from Micah. The message translation renders that verse, do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And don't take yourself too seriously. Take God seriously. Do the right thing. Love so that the fruit of what you do is compassion. And walk the way with God. Doing, loving, walking. These are watchwords to attend to. What if we constructed our budget here at Fondren Presbyterian Church thinking about these categories? How much do we spend on doing justice, on creating a fruit of love, of walking humbly with God? Of course, that does not remove the necessity for having line items so we can track various expenses. At the same time, part of what we do say, spend for utilities, makes it possible for us to have a time to worship this morning. What we do in terms of having personnel makes it possible to do particular activities here at the church. Can we allow ourselves 
to be creative enough to think a little bit in different categories. I asked the different church committees last fall to think about the, this as a way to prepare their budget request for 2023. The finance committee has reviewed these and reviewed the 2022 budget and is looking to plan the 2023 budget and how the committees have divided things up. And you, you have a role in the 2023 budget. It won't happen without you, I can guarantee it. So do I, we all have that role. What you do will determine how Fonder Presbyterian Church moves forward with its mission and ministry in 2023. The budget that the session approved for last year, for 2022, was about $380,000. That included, or did not include, a pastor's salary for half of the year. The budgets for the last several years, when you look back through the, the records, run around $400,000, 400 to 420000 each year, there have been differing degrees, both of income and expenses. Things change on both of those sides. And that is a lot of money. $400,000 is a lot of money. I take it seriously. Your session, the governing council of this church takes it seriously. You take it seriously. I know that. The purpose of the church budget though, is not simply to have a clubhouse for God. The purpose of the church budget is to be a mission outpost for Jesus Christ in Jackson, Mississippi. And through this place to shine a light out into the rest of the world. Today is Stewardship Dedication Sunday. There's a pledge card that's in the bulletin and they were mailed to, uh, to members. Your card is an indication of your intent for the year to support this mission and ministry of Jesus through this place. Sometimes things change and we may intend to do something that we can't follow up on and that's understandable. That happens a lot in church life. We plan for what we know and we do the best we can with that plan. What you share through this process, though, will determine what we are able to do at Fondren Presbyterian Church in 2023. So I'm going to ask you to consider a pledge to Fondren Presbyterian Church. You know your circumstances. You know what works for you. The method by which you give can be determined by a variety of ways. You could give weekly, you could give monthly, you could give annually. But decide, decide on what works for you, one way or another. If you're not ready to make that pledge today when the baskets come through, you don't have to. But think about it. Think about what is going to happen for you. Now, I'm aware that people have multiple commitments. The Presbyterian Foundation, which manages a, a bunch of, of uh, resources for the mission of the different Presbyterian churches, including our own, has done a study and it came up with a figure of about eight commitments that every Presbyterian has. We all support other places in addition to our church. But our support of a local congregation is important, and I would ask you to think about that today. A few years ago, I was uh, sitting in my office, minding my own business, and the telephone rang. Right? And it was my cell phone, and it said, Auburn, Alabama. I went to Auburn University, so periodically I get called. I answered, and the voice on the other side of the call said, Joel, this is Mark Wilson. I did not know Mark Wilson, but he knew me. 
I found out that he is the director of the Carolyn Marshall Drawn Center for the Arts and Humanities at Auburn University. He told me that, like myself, he had done a PhD in history at Auburn University. And like me, our major professor was Wayne Flint. Wayne, or should I say Dr. Flint, is the author of 13 books about Southern history in politics and religion. Lately, he's written a couple about the author Harper Lee. But more importantly than the number of books he's written, or the number of lectures he's given, more important to me is that he guided me in an intellectual journey that was critical in my life. My encounters with Wayne formed a lasting memory and have been part of who I am and shaped who I am. Mark was calling to tell me that the center that he directed was going to create an award to honor Dr. Flint. The award would be a monetary prize that would go to a graduate student each year. When I was a graduate student, I won several awards that had prizes with them, monetary prizes with them. I recall how much the boost of those awards and those prizes meant. There was actually more to my ego than the money involved, but it was always nice to have a few hundred dollars come your way. So, I am all for recognizing and encouraging graduate students with awards and prizes. The funds collected would be used for an endowment to generate a prize. Mark told me that Dr. Flint had 20 PhD students. There were 20 of us. And he was calling to ask each one of us to give a $1,000. One, a thousand times 20. That's not an insignificant amount of money. Uh, too bad, I thought, you know, it really would have been great if Tim Cook, the, the CEO of Apple and also an Auburn alum, had been a, grad, had been a student of Wayne's Act. That's a whole other ask, though. But I had to admit, I was taken back when we came to that point in the conversation and Mark said to me directly, Joel, will you give $1,000? My reaction was a little bit of a bumbling fumble, I, I, I admit. Wait a minute, I mean, you know, I'm a preacher. I, was I am married to a teacher. $1,000? And then it occurred to me, it's not really the amount that's important. This was about me and what I was willing be able to provide as a gift to honor a man who had changed my life. I called Mark back. I told him that I would be happy and blessed and privileged to join others in creating this award. Today, I am asking you to make a financial commitment to Fondren Presbyterian Church for 2023. You determine what amount properly reflects your circumstances and your commitments. But I'm asking you to do this so that together <coughs> we may do the right thing. We may love so that the fruit of compassion is known in this place we may walk humbly with God, doing, loving, walking. Thanks be to God. Amen. During the, during the singing of the hymns, the ushers will bring the baskets forward. They're going to start at the back. And you're invited, if you so choose, to place your uh, pledge card at this time. Thank you.
affirm our faith using the text printed in the bulletin. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in God, whom Jesus called God the Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. But we have held against God. We hide from our Creator, ignoring God's commandments. We violate the image of God in others and ourselves, accept lies as truth, exploit anger and danger, and bring death to the planet entrusted to our care. Yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem the creation. In everlasting love, God of Abraham and Sarah chose the covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs to the Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her mercy child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. As we join our hearts and prayers together, um, I would let you know that yesterday I learned of the death of a former member of this church, um, Eva Francis Fares, who has been living in Covington, Louisiana for many years, but remains a faithful part um, in the community and, and sharing with news. Um, and her obituary is in the Clarion Ledger this morning. Um, there will not be a service at this time, but there will be later on, and when we learn those details, uh, they will be shared with you. Let us turn our hearts and minds to prayer. Oh Lord, you know the days are gloomy, the sky is cloudy, and rain often comes. The dark and the rain happen on all of us, the just and the unjust, the wise and the foolish, the rich and the poor, the righteous, and those who are not. Such things happen when we expect them and when we do not. We lift our voices and pray this day for those who are stuck in ongoing days of darkness, for those who've had their hearts flooded, and we remember those whose spirits have not enough water in them. We pray for the nations of the world, govern, may, the, may leaders govern fairly maintain order and uphold those who are in need. We are bold enough to ask that you be at work in them in ways we may not understand, but so that circumstances may be transformed and possibilities created to allow goodness and mercy and grace to be known. May all who worship you follow your word made flesh in Jesus. Bear witness to the goodness and grace to share your love. 
Thank you for the witness that we share here through Fondren Presbyterian Church. Thank you for the witness that has made in the past. Give us strength and courage to continue for the future. Bring into our remembrance all those who have served you here on this church. In this place, especially, we pray today for Eva Francis, but all others who have gone before us, who form the great community of saints, and we pray for those who will come afterwards, those that we may not even know, but who will look back to us as their ancestors of faith. We offer our prayers for you in the name of Jesus our Lord, and we are bold to join the saints of old and the saints of the future as we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power As we prepare to leave this day, we make an offering. We make an offering of our own beings as we walk out the doors. You are also invited to consider making an offering to the church by using one of the offering plates here or using uh, the other instructions that are in the, in the uh, order of service. You may use the QR code or you may mail something to the church. Whatever you do, make that offering come from the place in your heart that produces joy, so you may share that joy, and we may share that joy together. Let us join together as we sing hymn 729, Lord, I want to be a Christian. Please stay. <laughs>
May we in all that we do seek to walk in the ways of God, to do justice, to love mercy, to love kindness, to walk humbly with our God. And as we do that, may we find that abiding goodness and happiness and blessing so that we are able to share that with others. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may it take you up and it surrounds you, encompassing you as you breathe in and as you breathe out. May it follow you with every step you take and every stride you make this day and always. Go in peace.